A fourth pipeline option under consideration since Caspian oil became available went through Turkmenistan and Afghanistan to Pakistan. But the political and security reality on the ground made such a solution impossible. Azerbaijan and Turkmenistan were embroiled in a fight over who had the right to exploit the Azeri and Chirag Caspian oil fields. One of the problems of the Caspian, however, is its legal status has never been fully demarcated to the satisfaction of the five countries bordering the Caspian. Uh, individual Caspian countries have uh, made arrangements and agreements as to demarcation of, of the waters and of the Caspian, but there is still no blanket or umbrella agreement covering the exact legal demarcation of the Caspian. Turkmenistan has claims against certain fields which are now considered to be part of Azerbaijan. There has been work for many, many years trying to come to a, a full legal agreement between the Caspian states, but so far it's proved very elusive. In addition, Turkmenistan's president for life, Sapamurat Niyazov, had evolved into one of the world's more repressive and most eccentric dictators. In a famous political stunt, Niyazov renamed three oil fields and gave them Turkmen names, one of which was his middle name, Sirdar. With Niyazov in command, it was simply too risky to count on a route through Turkmenistan. <laughs> The situation in Afghanistan was equally perilous. A devastated infrastructure due to years of war, dating back to the Soviet invasion in the late 1970s, would require massive investment to build and maintain a viable pipeline route. The rise and fall of the Taliban regime was also a question mark. Although Western oil companies were in contact with the repressive regime before its demise, a growing public awareness campaign in the West against the Taliban would have made it politically difficult to route a pipeline through Afghanistan. Today, the post-Taliban government is unproven and struggling to assert central control over a country carved up by regional warlords. <laughs> Pipeline security would be perilous at best. Many pipelines are effectively the geopolitical fault lines of the early part of this century. Um, and it's the politics of the countries through which the pipelines pass have to be aligned in the proper way for pipeline projects to succeed. Um, I think it could be many years before the situation in Afghanistan is stable enough to consider that seriously. Even if the oil could get to Pakistan, there could be trouble. A long-standing dispute between Pakistan and India over ownership of the province of Kashmir might have prevented the oil from going east to India and beyond where it was needed most. Also, a history of war between these two countries, combined with their concerted efforts to obtain nuclear weapons, scared Western companies away from Pakistan. If there were, was a pipeline that went from Turkmenistan to Pakistan via Afghanistan eventually, um, it would be going into the world's fastest growing oil market, uh, which is Asia, and particularly China. So it would certainly, from the West point of view, help secure supplies to a very important regional economy, part of the world's economy. Um, but as I said, it would take many, many years for, for that to happen. A fifth option would be to transport the oil through Russia but this would see the pipeline going through the North Caucasus, dangerously close to Chechnya. Chechnya declared independence at the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991.
Unable to reach a political agreement and seeking to end the separatist movement, Russian troops attacked the capital Grozny in 1994, only to get bogged down in a year-and-a-half-long war until Russian troops pulled out of Chechnya in September 1996. <laughs> But the situation on the ground sometimes can be baffling. According to Chechen fighters, the pipelines skirting their region were, for a time at least, left alone during the war in Chechnya for purely economic reasons. It has also been rumored that Russian oil and gas companies themselves have paid off the Chechens to keep the pipelines open. However, as war continues in the North Caucasus, no infrastructure is safe. This natural gas pipeline on the Dagestani-Chechen border now lies off its rail. A second Chechen war began in the fall of 1999, when Chechen forces under the command of Shamil Basayev seized territory in neighboring Dagestan, claiming it an independent Islamic republic. The war has more or less been dragging on ever since, increasing the overall instability in the North Caucasus. In addition to the ongoing conflict, Chechens have been implicated in numerous hostage-for-ransom incidents in the North Caucasus in a quest to raise money for weapons with which to fight the war. Individuals from Western companies are prime targets. There are pipelines that go through Chechnya, and when the Western consortium um, first started developing the field uh, off Azerbaijan, um, the Azeri Chirak and Deepwater Ganeshli fields, they opted for two what they called early oil pipelines, uh, one which goes from Baku to Supsa on the Black Sea coast of Georgia, and one that did pass through Dagestan, a northern route that went through Dagestan and skirted Chechnya, which goes to the uh, Russian port of Novorossiysk on the Black Sea. Um, very little oil is now sent along that route. Several years ago, after the fighting erupted in Chechnya, the Russians built an uh, additional loop to the pipeline to take it further away from Chechnya. Um, given the current state of affairs in that part of the world, it's unlikely that, that significant amounts of oil will ever go through uh, that pipeline. A pipeline through Russia was not the preferred option for other reasons. Ever since getting Azeri oil out of the Caspian became feasible, it was one of the United States' strategic imperatives to ensure that the pipeline route would weaken, not strengthen, Russia's stranglehold on Central Asian oil. The Caspian has always been a very politicized region, and the development of oil in the Caspian has been as much a political issue as a commercial and economic issue. So that has been a political um, tug of war between the United States and Russia to a certain degree. Um, as I say, it's not, not every element of the Russian government is opposed to Western investment in Azerbaijan or the Caspian generally, but perhaps the more conservative elements um, in Russian in the Russian government and, and other agencies uh, have been opposed to it, and so it has been seen as kind of a great game between the United States and, and Russia. 